All right. 2.6, solving absolute value inequalities. So in your student journal, I believe it's on page 55. Okay. 55, it talks about your core concepts here. 54, 55. Um, solving absolute value inequalities. Remind your neighbor what you know about absolute values. When you're solving absolute value equations, what are the things that we need to deal with? Important things about absolute values. Quinn. You must have a negative and a positive case. Okay? Negative and positive cases. Yeah? It is the distance away a number is from zero. Okay? You always have to have positive and negative cases, though, for sure. All right? Some things with inequalities that you may want to write down. First, an absolute value. Inequality, like we know it cannot be, an absolute value cannot equal a negative. Can an absolute value, my question is, can an absolute value be less than a negative? Absolute value mean, means distance from zero. It represents a distance. Is it possible for a distance to be smaller than a negative? No. no. So this is, if you saw that, this would mean no solution. In other words, it would be a negative number. Okay. Or A is less than negative 20. Or, so an example of that would, like if you had the absolute value of A is less than negative 20. That's not possible. You can't have a distance that is less than zero. Yeah? Uh, I just have thought of this. Just to go in front of it. But um, in the word A, absolute value, I'm saying that to the left, stop at zero. So I just keep going. So I got to add that? Yeah, would it stop at zero? Or would it keep going? It wouldn't stop at zero, but... If, if I can like play off that, let's say I put a letter in there. Let's say I put A here. Can you have a number, or excuse me, can an absolute value be greater than a negative? When is an absolute value greater than a negative? Always. So if you see a negative here and it has a greater than sign, it's always true. This is infinitely many solutions. That is always true. So, hey, what's going on, man? Yeah, it might be that one. Okay, that's infinitely many. So, where we keyed in earlier in the year on absolute values, and we said, well, if there's a negative on this side, it's a no solution. Well, it's not always the case here, right? If, it, if it's less than a negative, it's no solution. It's greater than a negative, it's infinitely many. Some key things there. All right? We're going to see some other um, some other stuff here, but I want to get those out to you. All right, we're going to try these here. I want you to work with your groupies. Okay, go ahead and answer questions one through three, as you can. Sure. What do we get for number one? Who set up their cases? What's my negative case? We get x and negative 3.5, right? Everyone agree? All right. That's the negative case. Notice I didn't put a symbol in between. Okay, I'll do that here in a minute. Positive case. So we take what's in here, x, and we make it positive 3.5. So please note, that these pieces right here did not change. They're all the same. What was in the absolute value, we know the number. If I just ignore the symbol for a minute. Okay, pretend it's like a, a plus symbol or an equal symbol. We know the number that is, there are two numbers, 3.5 units from zero on a number line. Negative 3.5 and positive 3.5. Right? Okay, so that would mean that when I'm doing a positive case, hey, I'm just going to bring that down. It's almost identical to what this looks like. It's just without the absolute values. However, when I make this negative, it's like multiplying or dividing by a negative one. 
What happens when you change the sign here? Yeah, this sign flips. So when you're doing your negative case, you have to flip your sign. So if, you, if you're taking notes on this, where we wrote all that stuff down a minute ago, you may want to say, hey, on negative cases, my negative case, flip the sign. So now graphing this, is this an and or an or? How many say and? You guys think it's and? How many think it's or? Okay. So at negative 3.5, I'm here, I'm shading right or left. Right? Positive 3.5, shading right or left. This is an and graph. Both of those things have to happen. All right. Go ahead and write your negative case for number two. Okay, share with your neighbor what you get. So k minus 3 stays the same, right? In fact, it stays the same in all parts. We don't change it to plus or anything. k minus 3, the thing inside, stays identical. The thing outside, this becomes a... That becomes a positive now, right? It becomes the opposite of that. That becomes a 1, and this sign flips. It's the opposite of that. So negative also means the opposite is. So when you do a negative, negative 1, that's a positive 1. Okay, and this positive case actually becomes or stays negative 1. Okay? Now, some of you have looked at this. If we go through and solve this, do we get an answer? I mean, you can get numbers here, right? That becomes k is greater than 3. And this becomes... Thank you, 4. And this becomes k is less than 2. So you can actually get numeric values. Why, don't, why is this a no solution, though? Yeah, Quinn? Um, you can't see variable and at the same time multiple variables. Good. When you, yeah, you're like, well, dude, it says here my number is greater than 4 and it's less than 2. Okay? Why else? I didn't, I didn't do that. Just at the very beginning, I just saw the thing happen. So that was Yeah, this says less than negative 1. It's saying an absolute value is less than a negative. Remember our discussion at the very beginning? Absolute values can't be less than a negative. That would mean your absolute value is a negative distance. That is no solution. And yes, that works every time. So really, you could have not even done any of that. You could have just looked here and said, well, dude, absolute value can't be less than a negative. That's no solution. I did. Like right here. Yeah. No. So you got to ask if it's possible. So like number three, when you're looking at it, is that possible? Could your absolute value be less than 11? It doesn't matter what's in it. Absolute value can be less than 11. So that's good. It's possible. Now let's do our negative case and positive case. Okay, set up your two cases there. Okay, so I've got my negative case. How many got that? Good. Put you just exact same thing, right? It's what's here drops down there. And you write negative 11. Flip that sign. Okay, 2w minus 1, exact same thing. It's right there. That's 11. Solve it up. OK, 
Okay. Is this an and or an or? This is an and. Okay. When I'm at negative 5 and I'm at 6, there's 0 in between. Shading that way. Shading that way. That's an and situation. Two numbers that would work. Negative 5 would work and 6 would work. If I put negative 5 in, I end up with negative 11 is less than 11. Okay. I put 6 in, I get uh, um, positive 11 is less than 11. Okay, let me take the absolute value. Notice 5 and 6 can't be solutions, but it tells me everything in between would work. Okay, so you want the values in between that would work. So if you're like, I'm not sure if it's an and or an or, like what if I shade everything? Well, if you tried like the number 7, which is over here, 2 times 7 is 14, minus 1 is 13. Is absolute value of 13 less than 11? Nope, so you couldn't shade on this side. So you always just try other values in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, but that's why you have an open circle out here. So 6 doesn't work, but it tells me my boundary. That's why we have the open circle. Okay, why don't you try these? Give it a go. 4, 5, and 6. Okay, tell your neighbor how you did on the, at least the inequality piece on that. You get that? Okay. And we shade away this time. So that is a? That's an ore graph. Good question, yeah. You guys, at the end, like, technically, it, it's kind of tough to, it's tough to tell unless you plug values in. Like, if I put 0 in, 0 plus 3, that's 3. 3 is not greater than 8, so I would have to say I can't ever shade over 0. That's not part of my solution set. Now, I will give you a shortcut here in a minute, okay? Uh, let me do number 5 and number 6 with you first, okay? What's wrong with number 5? Okay, but right now, if I look at it, is my absolute value alone? Now, i got to do that first, right, before I even make that judgment call. So if you're looking at this going, well, it's a negative here, so it says greater, so it's automatically infinitely many or no solution. We can't do that until the only thing left over here is the absolute value. So I have n plus 2, like so. We add 3. Right? That gives me negative 3. So now absolute values alone. Tell your neighbor what that means on, with that problem. Okay. So can an absolute value be greater than negative? Yes. When is it? Always. So this is infinitely many. So really in that case, nothing changed when we added the three other. It's still negative there, but it's a greater than a negative, infinitely many, meaning we shade. What do we shade? Everything. You don't have to put any numbers. Just shade it. You're like, but there you're done, dude. No. Sure. All right. I want you to get number six. Get the absolute value alone first. All right. Is it possible? Okay.
Are we good now? Can we do our positive and negative case? He says, yep. Nope. Why not? Fasting, why not? You have to subtract 3 out? I do have to get rid of the 3, I agree. Dividing. Yeah, we'll divide the 3 out. That's what Sebastian meant. He's just joking. Okay. D plus 1. This is 2. Good? Can we do our cases? Yep, it's possible. So let's do our case. Negative case and positive case. And this one's going to give me D plus 1. I'm going to just fly through this real quick because I think you guys have it. I just need to make one more short little point to you. So this is D is subtract 1, negative 3. And this one is D is 1. Okay? And or or. Or. Okay? Negative 3, 0, 1, closed, shade, and shade. Now, Look at that, those three problems, and then the previous three problems. These were all OR graphs, except for this one. This was a unique situation. OR and OR. Previous three, AND and AND. Okay? Yeah, no solution. Once again, another unique situation. Okay? In fact, if you're really paying attention, you should know that this problem right here is... What type of graph? And or or? That is an and. We shade in. Okay? This one right here is a? Or. That's an or graph. We shade out. Notice where your arrow is pointing on this one. Your arrow is pointing in to the absolute value. You're shading in between. You're here your arrow is pointing out from the absolute value. You're shading outside. This graph will look like this. Now I'm not going to put numbers on it. This graph will look like that. Okay? In general, that's what they'd look like. We always have the special cases, but so that's a quick way to tell. So like when you're doing your assignment today, your assignment on this is going to be student journal page 56 and 57. So if I'm looking at my student journal right away, here's page 56, right away when I look at number one, I should go, oh dude, my absolute value is alone. Hey, it's pointing in, which means this is what type of graph. And what type of graph is this? Or this one. Can we tell? You can't tell until the absolute value is alone. Now some of you will recognize, I, am I going to ever have to switch my sign here? The two steps to get my absolute value alone on this, what is it? Subtract 10 and divide by 3. I didn't multiply or divide by a negative, therefore my sign will never change. Therefore this will be a and graph. This one will be a? And this one right here will be I'm going to add four. It's going to be an and. Now we there was one special case today we never talked about, and I don't know if we actually uh, you'll hit a number nine on your assignment today. Number nine is a special case. So when you get to number nine, you're going to find out that that's a special case. In fact, let's do that one together right now. It looks beefy, right? Let's try that one together. Why don't we try number nine off number, page 57 of your student journal. You can't be lost already. You haven't even looked at the problem there. What? 56 and 57. Yep. They don't give you a lot of work room here. Unless you use the side over here. So it might be helpful to do a separate sheet. Looking pretty good. I want to grab that. 
question. You know. What's my first step? Subtract 14. I've got to get the absolute value alone first. When I subtract 14, what happens? Yeah, you get all this junk right here is equal or is, le or is greater than 0. And then what do we have to do? Divide by 6. When I divide six, 0 by 6, what do I get? 0. It's like having a bunch of nothing that you share with 6 people. Each of them get nothing. It's nice, you know. I don't want to brag, but it'll help out. Okay? So there it is. My absolute value is greater than 0. That's for sure true, right? I mean, definitely my absolute value is going to be greater than 0. If I do a positive case and a negative case, if I set up that, my negative case would say 3 minus k is less than 0. We still flip the sign even though we didn't put a negative sign with our 0. And our positive case is 3 minus k is greater than 0. That's a k. That's what it really means. Here we, do we add or subtract 3? Yeah, we subtract. That's a positive 3, right? It's a positive 3, so we subtract 3. You're left with negative k is less than negative 3. And that means negative k means negative 1k. How do I get rid of negative 1? Divide by negative 1, which means that switches. We get k is greater than 3. And now, do the same thing here. Subtract 3. Negative k is greater than negative 3. Divide by negative 1 again. You get k is, you got to split that sign, less than 3. So that means if I put 0 on my number line, 1, 2, and 3, is it open or closed? It's open at 3. Which way do I shade at 3? I shade to the right because of that. But on this one, I shade to the left. So what's the only number that will not work? Three. The only one that doesn't work, though. So when you have your absolute value greater than a zero, then you're going to have kind of a weird situation when you graph. It's a unique situation. What if it said if it, your absolute value was less than zero? Why can't you do it, Max? You're right, you can't do it. Good. Good. Absolute value cannot be negative. All the numbers less than zero are negative. So because it's greater than zero, that's true. That will work. But if it said absolute value is less than zero, it couldn't happen. All right, you guys have this, 56 and 57. Do your best on it. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Have a good work day as well tomorrow. Tomorrow will hopefully be day one of our of our uh, gaining our seats back there.